The first time encountering Clear Lake, we thought, what an insanely beautiful place. Tucked into the picturesque mountains of Lake County, it is one of the oldest lakes in North America and has an array of volcanic mountains, including the largest, Mount Kanopti, named by the original settlers, the Pomo Indians. There were once numerous tribes around Clear Lake, but the vast majority of them were decimated by European settlers and the gold rush. Prior to the European settlement, the land was full of diverse species and culture. Tribal communities were able to live a sustainable life off the land from an abundance of tools, fish, deer, and countless other culturally significant species surrounding Clear Lake. Animal and plant species also played an important role in ceremonial practices for the Elam and Pomo Indians. They are considered master basket weavers, used tools to make boats, or animal skin for clothing, and perform rituals at the shores of the lake. Today, cultural diversity at Clear Lake is endangered and the tribes that remain mainly speak English. Biological diversity is also a major concern due to anthropogenic forces. According to Sarah Ryan of the Big Valley Rancheria EPA, tribes use the lake heavily and for things that aren't necessarily captured by measurements geared to what the general public is doing. This bacteria seen on the surface of the water is widely referred to as blue-green algae because of its color, but the actual name is cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria is a phylum that gains energy through photosynthesis, and while not all cyanobacteria is harmful, some release deadly cyanotoxins. Anthropogenic sources such as construction of farmlands, road building, livestock grazing, logging, and firewood cutting have accelerated erosion resulting in large phosphorus inputs mostly from basins around the lake, which create these massive algae blooms. High levels of cyanotoxins in Clear Lake can be fatal to wildlife, and in humans the effects can include liver damage, kidney damage, neurological effects, and or skin irritation. For cyanotoxins, danger levels differ based on the toxic species, but scientists agree on a threshold of 20 parts per billion for total counts. Because you have to avoid the toxins at all costs and present, it prevents the native tribes from performing culturally important rituals. Well, I think it's affected where a lot of natives uh, won't go into the water. And they tell their uh, children, and even um, on beautiful days and beautiful weather, they said, no, we're not going to go into the water. You know, because it's, uh, you know, and, and, and all the, a lot of natives know about the, the death of the dog. And uh, one elder had gone into the water last summer and she got very sick. And she even went on radio, you know, so, so uh, it's just an instinct type of a thing. And I guess you might say it's a cultural thing or, or because people who lived here, born here, natives who are born here, you know, they, they pretty much know the history of the lake. They know how our people once used it, and, and it was a very big part of, of our life here, and, uh, and still is, but just in a different way now. And so we don't recreate as much in the lake anymore because, because of the contamination. Because protection of natural resources is extremely important to the tribe, the health of the tulis, of the, the hitch thriving, the water quality being clean enough to be able to use the water for all sorts of tribal uses, though, that's why our programs are there, are to uh, notify us about uh, things that are happening and also to protect them. So we're looking at trends, we're looking to say, is, is the salinity of the lake going up? Yes, it is actually. And, and saline water means that there are certain life forms that can't live in it anymore. It's not that salty yet, but it's increasing and that's because of pollution. Um, so also because tribes use the water, especially in Clear Lake, there, there are things that tribes, um, ceremonial purposes and other uses of the water that maybe the rest of the, some other parts of the population don't use. And therefore any pollution that's happening to the lake could have a dis disproportionate impact on the tribes. So our programs are about, uh, it's basically called environmental justice. So it, it is um, reducing that disproportionate impact because the tribes have the right to use that water. They were here first. It's there, you know, they protected this lake and this watershed for so long. And because of the changes, of, because of land use and overpopulation and things, things have changed. And that has a pollution impact. And the, those pollution impacts are, 
are impacting the most sensitive population that uses this water for things that not many other people use it for. The cyanotoxins can affect you more readily, uh, so they're more uh, immediately dangerous. But mercury poisoning in the long run and over time is much more dangerous, like much more deadly. But, but on the level of species or, or habitat where it can destroy um, a number of living things in the, in the, in the area, uh, there's a difference between the heavy metal mercury and what's called methylated mercury. Methylated mercury uh, is a modified form of mercury that is uh, easier for the, it, 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 it's taken up into the environment in an easier way because it's been modified, it's not so heavy. So it can damage the, uh, it can damage, at, I believe the DNA and more of a cellular biological level because it's a heavy metal now that's in the system versus a toxin which is going to make you sick, you get over it as a human or maybe you know as a smaller animal you could die from it. But the mer so, so the, the toxins of the cyanobacteria is more of an immediate exposure danger and the mercury if you're exposed to it or you get it into your system can have long term uh, health effects. So they're, they're almost different, different kinds of challenges. At first, it didn't seem probable that humans could change the basic chemistry of such a large body of water. But in fact, when you look at the scientific data, that is exactly what has happened. From cyanobacteria caused by construction and farming to methylmercury from mining, human interaction with the land has caused contamination in Clear Lake. The Sulphur Bank Mine is located directly above the Elm Colony of Pomo Indians and has been leaching mercury into the lake since the gold rush. The area draws geologists, inspires scientific studies, and established constitutional case law. Mining began in 1865, and by 1918, the Sulphur Bank Mine is credited with producing 7 million pounds of mercury. During gold processing, loss of mercury was estimated to be 10 to 30 percent per season through the mid-1800s, which resulted in highly contaminated sediments at mine sites. The worst location at Clear Lake, the Herman Pit, is filled with acidic water covers 23 acres to a depth of 90 feet and is located 750 feet above Clear Lake. The mine was closed in 1957 and became an EPA Superfund site in 1990. So where do we go from here? This film is doing the first step, raising awareness. But now I must follow the lead of the Pomo Indians and the EPA to take action. They are working together to place signs around the lake, warning of the toxic hazards. However, this is only putting a band-aid on the problem because it doesn't change the levels of cyanobacteria and mercury in the water, and it creates economic hardship, staring away would-be tourists. In 1992, the EPA remediated the land by cutting back the slope of the mine along the shoreline, then covered it with clean soil and reseeded. The EPA also built a dam between the flooded, acidic Herman Pit and the shoreline in 1996 that is distinctly different in color from the water in the lake. They also ran a 4,000 foot pipeline to divert surface water runoff away from the pit in 1999 and away from the Pomo Indian Colony next to it. In 2009, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act awarded $5 million to the cleanup of the Sulphur Bank Mine and remediation of Highway 120, which leads to the Elm Colony of Pomo Indians, a small reward in a long, ongoing battle. Time is ticking, and we need to do something. We are nearly on the edge of a crisis, but we still have a chance to face the challenge and restore the species, the ecosystem, and the cultural diversity at Clear Lake before they are lost forever.